Thank you for the banjo theme song. Today, Emily, the art dog, and I are going to teach you about masks. And many, many, many cultures all over the world either used to have a mask-making tradition or still have one. Um, many native cultures in our country still make masks, and we have a mask-making tradition that's alive and well in New Orleans for Mardi Gras, for example. So I found a bunch of masks in books that I want to show you. And if you do a quick internet search, you can find masks literally from all over the world. And they are, there's a huge, huge variety of them. Some are for weddings, some for funerals, some for puberty, some for celebrations, just all kinds of reasons. So we're going to show you some masks here from books that seem like the easiest way to do it while we're filming. Here we have Quaquito Eagle Mask, and when you open it up, there's a human on the inside. This is from the northwest coast part of our country. And next to it, this is a Mayan mask from the country of Mexico. Above it, we have the same mask, a close-up and the entire mask from the Sepik River culture in Papua New Guinea that is a spirit mask. Below it we have a mask by Sergeant Johnson. He was an African American artist and he was very very influenced by African masks. This is specifically influenced by the Benin people in the Congo region of Africa. To the right of that we have several Inuit masks for many different purposes. And above the Inuit masks, we have a pre-Incan Colombian sun mask that's made of hammered gold from La Tolita culture. So these are just a few that I happen to have in my house um, that I could easily show you. Just to give you some ideas. And now I'm going to clear a little workspace and we're going to make some masks. Today we're actually going to use a brown paper grocery bag. You may recall a few lessons ago, I asked you to start saving grocery bags because they're very, very useful. Now I'm going to show you some more masks that I made. And of course, you don't ever have to copy me. These are all from my imagination, except for this one. This one I copied from a mask that I saw in a picture years ago. I thought it was really, really neat. It's painted wood. This one is not finished, but I just did the black lines. This bag, by the way, I crumpled and ironed, and that's how you get that effect if you want that effect. Here. These are all crepa with watercolor on paper grocery bag, which I then cut out and glued or stapled to a background. Now, not all of you will have 12 by 18 inch colored paper in your home for a background. You don't need to do that step. Of course you may if you want to. Let me show you how I made the grocery bag work for me. So you just take your grocery bag. And those of you who have been my students, you're familiar with working on grocery bags. We do quite a few projects on them. They're very sturdy and they hold up well. And they're free. So I cut down this corner. I cut down this corner, I cut down this corner, and I cut down this corner. All right, and we're going to save the scraps because we're going to do another paper bag project later on. Now it looks like this. And I've actually done projects where I keep the bag like this, but we're not going to do that today, but that's another choice. I've printed on the bag like that, and that can be really cool and really fun. Today, I'm going to cut this one right here, and then I have a piece of paper. These pieces, I'm going to save because I'm going to use those for something else, which I'll show you in a different lesson, okay? I like to put the handle on top. Some kids don't like the handle. If you don't like the handle, cut it off. That's certainly your choice. Notice that this side has text, 
So we're going to work on the other side, unless you want to layer over your text. That's certainly something you could do if you want to. We're going to do this with Crepa. You can do this with any art supply that works for you. We just haven't done Crepa on a brown paper bag yet, and so I thought we'd give it a try. All of our projects are adaptable to meet your needs. You never have to do them the way that I show you. Okay? And normally, we would start in pencil, but that'll be hard for you to see. I'm just going to use a white crepe. Okay? Now this mask is just for my imagination. Okay? If you have fiber at home, you can poke holes in here and add fiber to the top or the bottom or the sides. I'm going to draw pretend fiber on. I don't have any raffia at home. But if you do, you could certainly add it. You could also add yarn. That would work. Pipe cleaners would work. When I give you a project, that's kind of your jumping off place. You can change it any way you want. And I'm pressing kind of hard because I'm going to paint over this with black. That's called Crepe Au Resist. We did a different Crepe Au Resist project earlier in the series where we painted watercolor over white. Many different colors. This time we're just going to paint with black. And again, you might want to paint with colors. That's fine too. But that's how I got the effects of all the ones I just showed you was I painted with just black watercolor. I'm pressing kind of hard. It shows up better if you press hard. Okay. This kind of peach color shows up really well when you paint over it with watercolor. So I'm going to use some of that. Pressing hard. And if you want to copy a mask off the internet, or if you want to pause the video that we're making here and copy any of those masks, feel free to do that. That can be awfully fun. Some masks are so, 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 so cool. That's why I copied that one that I showed you that I copied. I thought it was really a beautiful image. Now, let's try some orange. Pretty soon we're going to take a shortcut, but I want to get enough colored so that when I paint, you get the proper effect. Okay? And if you have colored paper that you can cut it out and glue it onto or staple it onto, go right ahead. That could be a really neat look. You certainly don't have to. You can just paint the whole paper bag black. That also looks very cool. There's always many, many, many ways to do every single idea. We're almost ready for our shortcut. I just want to get enough colored in that the effect will be obvious to you when I start to paint. A lot of cultures on their masks do markings that are supposed to be like ritual scarification because they use that technique in real life. So I'm going to do that. Okay, now we're going to take a shortcut and I'm just going to paint from here to here but I'm going to ask you to pretend that I colored the whole thing and I am painting the entire paper black, okay? Because that'll look really cool. So, I'm going to use a fairly large brush because I'm not doing detailed work here. And this is always a little scary, but what you have to remember is that crepe has oil in it, and oil will resist the watercolor. So even though it looks like you might wreck it, you're not going to. 
and it beads up on top of the crepe eye, and it ends up looking almost like fabric when you're done. And the reason I like using paper bags for this technique, which you don't have to, you can use regular paper, is they're very sturdy and they hold up really well if you put crepe on them and paint on them and water on them, they don't fall apart. Because of course they're made to carry groceries, so they've got to be strong, right? And you'll notice that where my hand was holding the bag, the oil from my skin will resist the paint a little bit too. Which is kind of neat, I think. Because our skin has a lot of protective oils in it to protect our hands. You just keep going until you have covered your entire mask with paint. Actually, your entire paper bag with paint. And when it's done and it's dry, you've got yourself a built-in handle that you can hang it up by which is also kind of cool, I think. So now what I'm going to do is have you pretend that this little guy is finished and I'll put a finished one on top of it. I made this the exact same way except for I cut this out and stapled it to a background. But you can see that simply painting this bag black also looks pretty cool. And I've had kids paint the bag background, this part, a different color, too. Like red or orange or whatever they want. So there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoy making a mask. I hope you enjoy your crepe resist. And I hope you learned a little something about masks today. Miss you.